Hello all, I hope you're having a great week so far. The day I'm recording this is Tuesday, July 4th, so I'm off today, I'm at home. So I thought I'd record this in the backyard. I'm going to start doing a little barbecuing here in a little bit. So if you hear the joyful noises of the puppy next door or some birds, you'll know what's going on. Well, let's remember what, uh, what's going on for this Sunday. Remember, we're in our unit entitled Real Relationships. This week we're in session six. It's called Encourage One Another out of Acts chapter 11, verses 19 through 26. And the point of the lesson is to encourage people in their relationships with Christ and one another. Okay, this is the last lesson in this unit on real relationships. Next Sunday, on July the 16th, we'll have a standalone lesson, and then we'll get into the next unit, the next six-week six week unit uh, for this quarter. All right, as we look in our text in Acts chapter 11, we see in verse 19 that, th that there was some persecution that started uh, after Stephen was killed. If you want to, you can go back to Acts chapter 6 and read chapter 6 and 7 through the very first few verses of Acts chapter 8 and read about Stephen and gives you a little background there in case somebody has some questions about uh, Stephen and who he was. So uh, as we remember, he was the first recorded Christian martyr. So he was executed and after his execution, persecution increased with the, with the new believers. And so this caused the Jews uh, who were believers to scatter. Now let's look at this map. We see uh, they were based in Jerusalem, and uh, they went to Antioch in the north, to Cyprus, that island over there. We're going to look at Cyrene here in a little bit. Now, there are good things that can happen from tragedies. Remember, not all things are good, but God can work all things together for good. Okay, let's remember that. And Acts chapter 1, verses 8 and 9, Jesus, right before he ascends, he tells his disciples, you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Well, they were doing a decent job of being his witnesses in Jerusalem. But it took the execution, the stoning of Stephen, in order for the Christians to scatter to the ends of the earth, so to speak. So let's not be too hard on those early Jewish believers. Remember, they had those Jewish prophecies of, in what we call the Old Testament, which foretold, which predicted the Jewish Messiah who would come for the Jewish people. And so we might be able to see, if we look at it through their eyes, how they might have thought that that good news was just for them. Now, let's ask this to your class. Ask them, how can your church or how can your class be more inclusive? Of other people is there a culture or a subculture in your community in your town that's not being reached and if so how can you as an individual or as a class or as a church how can you better reach them with the good news if you've ever been to a non English speaking country I've been to several uh, you know how it feels to be an outsider everybody else is is talking in a language you can't understand and uh, people over here are laughing. You're not sure if they're laughing at you or if they just told a joke. It has nothing to do with you. You know, you, there's there's a lot of suspicion and uh, a lot of insecurity in the in the in the person who's not a part of that culture. So let's just remember when we have those people in our community to show kindness, not disdain, uh, to those who have different customs. Uh, let's here, here's a good practical thing to do. If you live in or near a college town. See what you can do as a class or a church to befriend international students. You know, we don't have to go to the world. The world actually comes to us now, uh, don't they? Especially on our college campuses. I know my, my son-in-law and, and daughter uh, do this. And so they invite, they befriend international students to get to know them, to make their life a little easier while they're here. And it also allows them to introduce to the international students their culture, American culture, and part of their culture, part of my daughter and son in laws culture, is being a Christian. And so they will invite them to uh, Easter, Christmas services especially, just so they can experience and get to know a little bit more about this Christian culture. Now, if we look down in verse 20, we see that believers from Cyprus and Cyrene, let's go back to that map, we see that 
Cyrene is way over in North Africa, probably about 700, 750 miles or so, something like that. Believers from Cyprus and Cyrene went to Antioch and they started sharing with not the Jewish folks, but the Greeks also. Let's remember that story from John chapter 4 where Jesus is talking to the Samaritan woman at the well. And the disciples were amazed because Jesus is breaking all these cultural norms. There's a man speaking to a woman. There's a Jew speaking to a Samaritan. There's a rabbi speaking to a woman that has a, a questionable reputation at best. And I, I really think this probably had the same effect to those, to those Jewish believers that they ministered to the Greeks also. But what was the result? What was the result of these people ministering to the Greeks and speaking to them? It says right there in the verse, doesn't it, that great numbers were added. So here's something else to think about. For you as, as a leader, for a, as a teacher, when you see other classes growing and reaching people whom you're, you're not reaching, don't be threatened, be thankful. When your church sees other churches reaching and ministering to people in your community that you're not reaching, don't be threatened, be thankful. All that's true because the growth of God's kingdom is far greater than the growth of your own kingdom. The growth of God's kingdom is greater than the growth of your church. It's more important than the growth of your Sunday school class. We're all on the same team here. Let's not be jealous. Let's not be threatened, okay? Now the church in Jerusalem heard uh, what was going on in Antioch and they sent Barnabas, whose name means what? It means son of encouragement. They sent him to, to check it out. You know, several years ago, I think it was about seven years ago or so, we experienced in our church a, a huge number of youth who were being saved and baptized. And so the state convention, our Arkansas Baptist State Convention, called and, and checked on this and wanted to know what kind of events are you doing that, that are drawing these students to your church and, and that, they are, that they're being saved? And uh, our youth pastor had to reply that it wasn't events, it was just the sharing of the gospel through our Sunday and Wednesday programs. And just that preaching of the gospel, the kids were coming to Christ. Now Barnabas sought out Paul after this. He, uh, it's been about 10 years or so since his Damascus Road conversion. And together, Barnabas and, and, and Saul, or Paul, taught together for about a year. And so they were discipling. They were discipling those new believers in Antioch. And part of discipleship is encouraging. I know my pastor, when I was in seminary in Fort Worth, uh, Dr. Bob, he was a discipler. He was an encourager. And he just didn't offer empty words, uh, you know, just the, the constant strokes and bragging when he didn't really mean it. He, would, he, he believed in me and he told me so and it really helped my self-confidence in ministry. It gave, he gave me opportunities to stretch myself as well, and that, that occasional note of encouragement. So let me encourage you to encourage your class to write those notes of appreciation. This week, in fact, why don't you pass out some note cards? Pass out note cards to everyone in your class and challenge them this week to write a note of encouragement to someone. Could have been someone from 20 or 30 years ago. Could be somebody in their, in their church. And make sure you say, write a note of encouragement to someone other than me, right? Other than the teacher. Because that looks a little self-serving if you're handing out notes of, you know, for people to write notes of appreciation or encouragement and then you get half of them. Uh, of course, it may say something about your teaching if you get none of them either. but start off by saying anyone other than me think of someone who has encouraged you or who has uh, meant something to you and write a note of appreciation or encouragement and this will help get them in the mode of doing that now I encourage you to write handwrite a note instead of a text or an email which are fine but there's something about getting that hand, especially these days getting that handwritten note in the mail that says I took the time to to, to write this out. I just wasn't uh, writing in the back of the back seat of a car, somebody else was driving who were commuting to work and I thought of something and I texted you a note of encouragement. Now this was, you took the time, you hand wrote it, you mailed it, uh, spent 48, 49 cents, whatever the postage is now, and mailed that thing. That, that means something to people, okay? I know one of the things I do as a minister of education and I, I was pretty slack about this my first few years here, but I've gotten a lot better because my secretary, who is 
my wife keeps me uh, honest about this, and that is uh, at the beginning of every month I handwrite a birthday card to all my adult teachers. And it's usually about three lines, but I know people are, most people at least seem to be very appreciative of that because we can post those Facebook uh, happy birthday greetings and you know that just takes a couple of seconds. But there's something about getting that handwritten card in the mail. So all that to say, encourage your class to do that this week, okay? And then make it a goal, make it your personal goal and then encourage your class to make it their goal as well to intentionally encourage at least one person every week. Now, if you want to work some other verses into your uh, lesson this week, you might look at 1 Thessalonians 5.11 that says, Therefore encourage one another and build each other up just as in fact you are doing. Also Hebrews 3.13 says, But encourage one another daily as long as it is called today, as, uh, or so that none of you may be hardened by sin's deceitfulness. Encourage, encourage. Now, look, just a, a lesson outline. And, and part of this is in your, your Lifeway Teacher Guide, and I've changed a little bit of it. But anyway, this is how I'm going to approach it this week. That first little bit, encourage others to follow Christ. The second part, encourage others to remain devoted. And that last uh, verse or so, encourage others through discipleship. When you're discipling them, when you're encouraging them, when you're helping them in the faith, that helps, it encourages folks. All right, I hope you have, uh, by the time you see this, you will have had a great and safe 4th of July. Don't forget to pray for your class. That's one way you can encourage them without, even, without them even knowing it, is for you to pray for them. So I appreciate everybody who watches and hope you have a great, great Sunday school class.